Okay, we're live. Hi guys, it's Raven Robinson here with Gia Peppers for another special Ween webinar. First, thank you, Gia, so much. I know you had so much going on today, so I really appreciate you for taking the time to speak to our Ween members. You know, I'm a Ween girl for life, so of course I had to do it. Thanks so, so much for having me, Raven. Of course. So let's get right into it. So please just talk, give us a background of who you are and what it is that you do. Okay. Um, so I'm Gia Peppers. Uh, I'm in a Starbucks right now, just so y'all know. We keep it real, real here. Um, and I am an entertainment journalist and on-air talent from Washington, D.C., um, but I live in New York now. Um, I went to Rutgers University, graduated in 2012, and I've been working um, in and in, inside the entertainment industry field here and in D.C. Um, for the past three, four years. Um, and before I graduated, I did Ween uh, my junior year, my junior year, the summer of my junior year. Um, and it really, really, you know, impacted who I was as a, as a woman, as a black woman in, in the industry. And I was able to gain a network of sisters who like I still literally talk to and see every day um, at work. And then of course, my big sisters and my mentors who are there, who I literally see all the time as well. Um, so and then to be honored, be honored on the Wee 100, I was like crying all day. And then V asked me to be the keynote. So um, it's just been one of the best and most fulfilling relationships and experiences that I've ever had. Um, but currently, I work with the NBA, uh, with the Washington Wizards. I work with BT.com as an on-air talent for their series, BT Breaks, which is on um, all day long, BT.com backslash breaks is where you can find it. Um, and then I work with Essence. I'm the contributing editor for EssenceFest.com. And then I also work with Ebro at Hot 97. I'm the managing editor of BlameEbro.com. So those are the things I do currently. Perfect. And you have an amazing background. What is your day-to-day -day like for all of our aspiring entertainment journalists out there? Dope. Yeah. So um, my day-to-day -day is crazy always because it's like I literally – Luckily, the season is over for the NBA, so I don't have to worry about like traveling back and forth to DC. But right now, my days are usually, uh, depending on if there's an event or not, I literally just came from a Greenleaf screening for an Oprah premiere, which was amazing. I got to take a selfie with Oprah, but my hand was shaking, so it didn't come out great. But anyway, um, I wake up around like 6 a.m., pray, um, really just try to center myself for the day. I'm super big on spirituality and God and, and um, you know, religion and and, and, and just whatever. I, I, I think all people should have something they, they are founded in and stand on. Um, so for me, that is my spirituality, my family, my re religion, what I believe. Um, so I always start my day there with prayer and um, pray for my family. Thank you for another day because we don't have to be here. Um, so I always really, really, really focus on that and just try to set the tone for the day. Um, I usually scan social media for a little bit longer than I should because you know, there's usually juicy stuff that happened overnight. And then um, uh, depending on the day of the week, I'll send out stories for my interns for Blaine Ebro to write uh, for our morning shift. And then um, check out what Hot 97 is talking about to make sure that, you know, the Blaine Ebro is aligned with um, what Ebro is talking about. And then... By that time, I should be ready to get up and get ready to go to BT. That takes about an hour, an hour and a half. Um, and, you know, because you have to come in full makeup and hair as they don't have a personality. Uh, I'm sorry, a makeup artist yet uh, or a hairstylist. So you got to be beat and cute and be ready for camera. So I go in there and then um, I'm stay, I shoot there from about 10 to 4 or 5, depending on how many days we, we have, uh, how, many, how many stories we have that day. Um, and then sometimes in the morning before that, uh, usually twice a week, I try to go into Hot 97 in the morning. And so it works. I just have to wake up super early at like, you know, 5 or just, you know, cut down my time uh, working. Um, and I'll usually go sit in on the morning show, have my meetings with Ebro, and then see, you know, if there's a celebrity that I really like. Um, you know, or if there's something that he needs me to do and stay around to do or meet with the digital team or just hang out with them. It's like family there. They're people that I love. So, um, you know, just be around them. I usually do that twice a week. And then also I'll go into Essence uh, probably once a week where, and just meet with my editors there. We are where the Essence Fest is around the corner. I make sure you guys buy your tickets if you have it. Summer Jam too. Everything. So much fun is happening this summer. Um, and, uh, and then the BT experience as well. Like, God, I'm going to be working hard this summer. 
Um, but yes, there is, uh, so those are my like day-to-day -day duties. I'm always like on my phone, checking the news all day, always checking Instagram, always checking the shade room and ball earlier, always checking to see like what's breaking, what people are talking about and how I can turn that into a story that's relatable, um, how my voice fits into that story, if it does or doesn't fit into that story. And then making sure that like my editors are good. Uh, having three jobs is absolutely like insane, but there's a great tool that we all have called prioritizing. Um, so if there's a fire happening in essence, I'll have to you know step away from my BET as long as I'm not shooting. Um, if there's a fire that's 97, the same thing. I'll just have to step away or go handle it or whatever. Metro cards come in handy. Um, cell phones that you can answer on email come in handy. But it can all be done. And um, that's basically what my day-to-day -day looks like. No really type of plan. Just get it done. Thank you so much for being so transparent. And no uh, before we continue, for our members um, who may not follow you, please just let us know your Twitter and your Instagram. Perfect. It's at Gia Peppers, G-I-A-P-E-P-P-E-R-S. Like salt and pepper, but with an S. Um, and I'm, that's on everything, Gia Peppers. Perfect. So, guys, make sure as um, things this evening stand out to you're tweeting, you're thinking, and you're getting her Instagram and commenting so people know she took the time to do this. I'm um, oh, getting thanks. some questions from the girls. Um, what was life like after college? Was it hard to find a job in the entertainment field right away? Hard, 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 hard. Like, like, so I interned everywhere in college so I could avoid not having the problems that I saw so many of my friends who left college have like they're just kind of like working everywhere any type of job so they can just make ends meet and I was like that is not gonna be me I was interning everywhere I interned at WPGC and I'm from DC uh, so I interned at WPGC with big Tigger Donnie Simpson Danella and Free um, while I was in college I would do that on my summers during the winters I would intern with the Wendy Williams show I did that for two seasons I did live with Kelly and Michael. I did Ween stuff. Like I was always making sure I was working somewhere or getting some type of relationship so that when I graduated, I would have a job. Um, graduation comes, it's turn up time. You have, you know, cookouts every day. You've got people to see, you've got family coming in from everywhere. It's like graduation is the best time because you have complaining and it's beautiful. And you know, I, I didn't go to grad school and personally I don't foresee grad school in my own future because I just um, have been working so hard uh, and we'll talk about that later about like you know what what what's the differences between like journalism going to business school like there's a, it's a whole different world um, but I think that my uh, my expectations were that I would walk out and somebody would be like hey here's a job that didn't happen at all I was at home like you know once the cookout settled down I was sitting on my couch and I was just like feeling crazy I was applying every day I was in Maryland my mom who is not the one to play with she's a real like she motivates me she pushes me but she's absolutely like if I am doing something crazy she's gonna make me get it together so um, I was it was like August and I was still had no job. I was still applying everywhere. I was working part time at like this company that I used to work with. And my mom saw me slowly but surely losing hope in my own dreams and what I had worked so hard for. And she literally dragged my little butt off the couch and was like, and not literally, but like, you know how I talk so well. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh my God, I can't stand you. Stop talking to me. And she's like, no, what you're not going to do is sit on my couch. I work, I pay for this house. She needs to get She drags me to my 84 year old aunt's house in Brooklyn in the middle of the summer. No AC, no nothing. I haven't seen this woman since I was four years old. And she doesn't have Wi Fi. There's like, I'm just like, oh my God, why are you to me off in the jungle? And she was like, find a job. And I hated that summer. I was so isolated. I had friends up here, but like I just felt like I was so isolated from everyone with my own two feet and started studying the Bible and started studying spirituality and why, why I was feeling all type of crazy. And, and then I read this book called The Alchemist that really, really helped me focus in on what I wanted my journey to be like. And I definitely suggest that if you are feeling lost or anything, especially after college, it's a really great read. The Alchemist, read it. I know you all probably know it's assigned to, had it assigned in middle school and you're like, what is this? Especially after college, I would read it just because it's like, it's kind of like a piece of art where you grab from it what you need. Um, and it really is about this kid, this young man on a journey to find uh, what he needs to find.
And so I was, that's when I realized that life is up to you. Um, and my first job after, after college was actually from, I did the NABJ program the year, the summer before, National Association of Black Journalists. If women, college students, all black people, y'all need to do it, join it if you're a journalist and you wanna be a part of the uh, community of black journalists. Um, and I met a woman there at a career fair named Linda Coombs and Linda worked at CBS. And she thought I was impressive, but had no jobs for me at the time. And two months later, I was working at this like random advertising firm, like something that was on a jobs board, like indeed.com. It was horrible, I hated it. Literally all I did was like press arrows up and down for eight hours a day and like hated it. Made like $20 an hour, like no, made like $13 an hour, hated it. And I remember crying to my mom on the phone and I was like, mom, I'm gonna quit. She was like, here is what you don't understand. Now you are an adult and you cannot quit. So. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get it together and we gonna figure it out. And literally I hung up the call and I got another call from Linda after working there for two weeks and she was like, hi, do you want um, to take this per diem desk associate job? It's going to be the bare bones, but it's at CBS Radio News. You'll be working in the newsroom. You'll be gaining a lot of experience that you know, like yes, 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 Sean, sign me up. And little did I know it was hard news and my entire experience has been in entertainment. So for me, hard news is not my thing. But I realized, you know, this is an opportunity to get in front of people that I actually really, really respect in the industry, but also can learn from. So I worked there, um, uh, the newbies work mostly the 1 a.m. to 9 a.m. shifts. So I worked overnight in the newsroom as a desk associate, gathering breaking news stories. But I slowly started to realize that I didn't have the tough skin you need for news. Um, I learned quickly, like my first day we did the Sandusky trial and the James Holmes shooting. Um, the James Holmes shooting, if you guys recall, was when he went into a movie theater in Colorado and just shot up the place because he was crazy. And then Sandusky, who had molested all those boys at Penn State. And I should have known then that this is not the place for me because I would have always like felt so bad for all the people that, these good people that it was happening to. but. I just was like, I want to be here. Here's my job. I need this is my chance. Um, and six months in, I started to like it. Just started to take a toll on me as a person, and I realized that it wasn't it wasn't for me. So um, I moved on, and I actually left journalism completely and started in advertising for a year. And then I got a job um, working, and I started freelancing there. Um, and basically, a year into my, uh, well, six months into advertising, I realized that wasn't for me either, and I started freelancing. Um, SOBs was down the street from my job. So I still had my CBS ID. I did not turn it in on purpose. And I was like, I went into SOBs, into the press offices, and I was just like, hey, my name's Gia Peppers. I work for CBS Entertainment. We're starting you know, to get some new series happening. Do you mind if um, you know you add me to your press list for the events I would love to be included? And uh, the guy, this guy, uh, he was like, his name is Andre, and he was like, he was looking at me like he knew I was telling the lie. He was just like, but at the same time, he believed in me and he felt like I was going to do something great. And he gave me the opportunity, and that's. And I just started to ask my friends with cameras, like, "Yo, come, come with me." And my first interview ever on camera by myself. Um, doing my own things with Bridget Kelly. And I just started pitching the interviews that I would do to different sites like by Vixen. And these are all a lot of these women I met through Wayne who were like, you know, creators and editors over at different sites. So I was like, hey, I did this interview. Do you want it? A lot of the times they would say no, but still I was letting them know that I was serious about this. And then I got a job at this um, startup called instars.com. And I was a senior editor over there, but they didn't have any video. So I was like, what you won't do is have me who wants to be an honor talent, not do no video. So what we'll do is I'll start the entire YouTube. And by the time I left there, we had over 500,000 views. We had, you know, follow, the subscribers were growing. Um, but I started an entire thing myself because I was like, we're here in New York. Like we can be on the carpet, like let's do it. And so I ended up making it happen. Um, and then after that, uh, during that, I got a got um, one of my friends on Twitter was like, "Yo, do you want to do there this? There's an opening for a Washington Wizards co-host in DC." And I'm like, "They ain't gonna choose me, dog." But okay, whatever. I'll put my stuff in. Like I send it to the you know random info at monumental.com. Like all this, you know, when they tell you to send in your stuff, you're like, whatever. So I sent it in, and two weeks later, I got a call back from the front office, and they're like, "Hey." 
we want you to be one of our finalists for the Washington Wizards. And so I'm just like, is this a fake call? And they're like, no, 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 no. This is real. We want you to come in and audition. So I went into audition, made it to callbacks, and there was me and four other girls. And we rotated off preseason games for like six weeks, me going back and forth from DC to New York to audition in front of the city and to see who wanted us as their co host for that season. And that was in 20, 2014. Um, and so they loaded me in. It was like also a social media campaign. So my wings, all my people were sharing it. And um, I got it. And I've been doing that for two seasons. And then while that happened, I got the job as the associate editor of EssenceFest.com. And so I was working that, going back and forth between DC. And then after Essence Fest, I really, really started working with, uh, during that time, I also started working with Blaine Libro. So it just all happened like at one time. Last year was where I really like solidified my, my, um, my, my job that I have now. And then BT.com is actually fairly new for me. I've been working there, I want to say a month now to, maybe six weeks now. Um, and so that was fairly new as well. And it was actually an editor who knew my work from just watching, you know, different places. And I also do one-off things with like complex billboard. So it's a lot, but freelancing has taught me so much about, about being on top of what you want and kind of like making it work for you. But also time management is a really big thing for me. So that's pretty much my whole story. I know you only asked me about after college, but I go there. <laughs> yes, no, that's, that's definitely great because it answers so many other questions that a lot of our followers have. Um, yeah. In being in urban media entertainment, do you ever experience sex, um, sexism? And if so, how have you handled it? You know what's so weird for me? Like, and I, I'm going to be completely transparent here. I don't have a lot of followers because I don't post pictures of my ass. That's like the real, 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 like if you want that, you're there are hundreds of thousands of other places, but I choose not to be that. And there may be a day, like I'm again, still a young woman who's growing and, and figuring it out. And maybe one day I'll be proud of, you know, whatever and want to fly. Man, I might do it next in the summer, who knows? But like, I know that my journey has always been a bit harder because I really do have this, um, this um, mentality of longevity for me. So I've never seen a photo of Oprah's ass. Don't want to see a photo of Oprah's ass. It's just not really what I want to do. So um, when I think about the people who I look up to and aspire to be like, um, you know, I really, really make sure that I am creating a certain, and no, it's not even creating. You won't see me out here unless I'm on a beat. not who I am. So at the end of the day, like, that's really what it is. Um, and we ain't really helped me put that together, like what type of woman do you want to be? Because there's there's different types of women. Gee, what type of woman do you want to be? Um, and I'm the oldest and I've always been that girl that's like a little bit about like doing it right and let's do it the right way in this traditional way. And even though that sometimes holds me back, I definitely just, you know, and again, I'm growing and changing and learning. I'm 25, so I absolutely, you know, am young and I'm getting into the gym. So y'all might see some, you know, little cute photos, but you never see my full moody on my instagram and i think that's what people like to see like that's what people want to see so when men meet me in the industry it's never if they're familiar with me and, they, and if they even just see me like how i approach them i never feel like they feel like i'm the baddest in the room and they have to approach me a lot of the times the dudes are like oh hey what's up like passing girl until i talk to them and they're like oh she's super cool um, working in the NBA was definitely the first time where I felt like a female. Um, I have a male co-host, uh, Ronnie Rakai, who's super dope, who's one of my favorite people ever. Um, and But there are just certain things that like come with the territory of being a woman in sports that, you know, when I got there, I made sure that I like spent no time around the players so they knew that I was not trying to be a group. So they knew straight up, like, she ain't here, but there was a club they were at. I'm like, not nah, going. Like, no, 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 no. And I just made it very, like, clear. I just didn't want to be seen as that. Um, and so there are certain battles that I would have to fight, like, you know, salary-wise, you know, certain things. Like, I remember the first season, I didn't really do that much. And I, I talked to them about it, and now I'm all on the camera all the time. So it's just, like... There are certain battles that I've had to fight as a woman that I've learned to 
pick because not every battle is worth it. Like you still are a woman, and unfortunately, in a lot of these industries, it is a male dominated world. So you don't want to be seen as a person that's difficult, even though you might just be talking about, you know, the truth. So we have to be a little discerning with our with our choices for fighting. Um, and so I just learned how to like whatever whatever will bother me by this time next year, if it will still be a problem, then I then I know I have to fight for it. If by next week I'm not gonna be mad about it, I let it go. So um, you know, I've just been it's not really times where I feel like uncomfortable or anything like that. Thank God I haven't had look, thank God knock on it. Thank God I haven't really had any type of experiences where I felt like completely um, objectified or anything like that. That's also not who I am. I felt like the sexiest girl in the room. Like I don't carry myself with my sex appeal first because from the women that I've seen in my family, from the women that I look up to first, sexy is only one of the characteristics that make them great. I never want to be called the sexy Gia Peppers. I want to be called the brilliant Gia Peppers, the talented Gia Peppers, the Gia Peppers who is going to make you think about something instead of just the girl that you can, you know, do whatever you want with. And, you know, and there's a lot of different types of women, I think, which is so beautiful, like, um, that you can follow and you absolutely can, uh, you know, celebrate them for being sexy. And I don't condemn it. I love seeing women who are like so proud of their bodies that they'll do whatever. But then sometimes you really just, you got to remember, uh, for me, it's more important, balance is more important than um, just having sex appeal on front all the time. Right. That's definitely great advice. Um, getting in, as we get into the end, I know you have to go soon. Um, you can, uh, oh, you I just moved having... real quick. Okay. Sorry. It was like the lighting is now so much better over here. Hey, okay. <laughs> um, you've been a long time supporter of Wien and you also went through the Wien Academy. So uh, what makes women empowerment a priority and why do you encourage others to apply for the Academy? Um, I grew up a very insecure young lady. My entire life, uh, a lot of it's and, I, and I'm sure every woman has insecurities um, and everyone has things they need to deal with. But I remember growing up and feeling that I wasn't, you know, pretty. I wasn't like, I just remember feeling worthy of certain things. And um, when I can, and, and partly because a lot of women, well, I had my mom and my sisters and my friends who would tell me, like, I would never really meet a woman who just saw me on the street and be like, oh, hey, you're gorgeous. Or, you know, a lot of us don't have um, cheer a lot of cheerleaders in our lives. And I've had amazing cheerleaders in my life. But even then, sometimes you just have to do the self-improvement work. And luckily, I have been able to do the work. Um, and as I grow into a woman, I'm getting more and more confident in everything, my flaws and all, whatever. But I think um, women empowerment is so important to me because I'm just like, when I see women, we handle so much on a daily basis where like we don't understand how powerful and beautiful and worthy we are and how strong we are and how we are able to multitask and, and run back and, 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 and do things that mothers do and then go run a CEO in a boardroom, be a CEO in a boardroom or in. To celebrate that, to celebrate that about ourselves. But I think the most powerful part about women is that we are sisters. Um, and so when I can empower another woman to be great and to pull out her greatest potential, I'm absolutely going to do that because I feel there's enough of us out here tearing each other down. If you go into anybody's comments who's famous, you'll see what I'm talking about. So if I can be the opposite of that, and I grew up, you know, admiring Oprah, Oprah Winfrey, my Angelou, my mother, I never seen my mother tear another person down. And so in my in my way of thinking, why would you even do that? Um, and so I just I know a lot of people don't have a lot of love and light in their lives. It's just not something that is actually. Um, you know, and, and that's not true for everybody, but a lot of people grow up in, in different types of environments where they might not have a person every day that tells them that they're super awesome and that you're great. And they might not have a parent, they might have a parent who has to work six jobs to make ends meet and they might not, their parent might be tired by the time they come home. Um, and it's not anything personal, it just is what it is. And, I, and I'm like, if I can be a person that will help you feel better, that'll motivate you and inspire you, then I'm absolutely gonna do that. 
And I think I always tell people about lean because it just, it, what had before and whatever potential I had before, it made it that much more serious. And it made me realize that I could actually do this. It gave me the stamp of approval that I needed to move forward. Um, and it helped me, it shaped me to become not only a better woman, but a better sister, a better supporter, and a better journalist, a better honor talent, and um, a better cheerleader for like women and what we can do and how we are about it. Honey, if you look at Belisha's Instagram page, you you understand why you join Ween. She's everything. And then Sabrina, who's literally working for the woman who's probably going to be, it's just like, it's, it's so much empowerment, so much sisterhood, and so much love that I feel once you are fueled by that, you're kind of unstoppable. And that's what I like to think is happening with me. Amazing. Um, so any last words of wisdom for our other women in entertainment or aspiring journalists? Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me think on that because I want to be very, 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 very specific. Okay. This is going to be the hardest journey you ever take in your life. You want to be an entertainment journalist? You need to put on your running shoes, your climbing boots, everything you got because there's no money in it the first few years. You will be working 17 jobs, but the blog that you're writing for for free will probably be the clips that you send to the job that's gonna start paying you. So just be very, 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 very focused on what it is you wanna do, what it is you wanna accomplish, and then go for it with everything you have. And decide that you are going to be greater than every every failure, every time you, fail, which I don't really believe in, um, you know, because you learn when you fail. So it's like really just a teaching moment and something that is going to direct you to what's closer to your calling. And I got that from Oprah Chow fan. Um, and Super Soul Sunday has changed my life completely. Um, and just don't give up. And I, But there will be moments where you'll have six dollars before your next paycheck, literally. Are you going to give up and just go into advertising and, and, and just forget it? Or are you going to live each moment with what you have, bring it, and do your best? People are afraid to kind of shine because they know that once you get there, it's, it's, it's even harder to stay there. Um, but staying there is, is beautiful, man. So it's going to be a crazy ride, but don't ever feel like, you're alone. Use your friend and use and meet me, we and especially meet people that can help you and push you and only keep good people around you because there will be people who will try to like nitpick at you and make you think you're doing something wrong when you're not. Um, and understand that it's all a journey and you're just going with it and making it work. It's, it's all going to come together and all things work for the good. So just trust your journey. Go on it with everything you have. You're a smart person, and you you know like to be the best editor that they've ever seen. If you're a writer who loves to create the most magical and harmonious stories, and you are so good at you know being a vivid storyteller, tell your stories. Don't ever be afraid to start. And if there's something you want to do, an idea you have is not an accident. Start now. We have the internet. Do whatever we want. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do it because as soon as you listen to that, as soon as you let that play and focus on that more than what you actually can accomplish, then that actually becomes your reality. So worry about what's in front of you, accomplish it, be impressive every time you show up to some place, some interview, never leave someone feeling worse than they did when they first met you. And just be great, man. It's, it's, it's no telling what can happen. Thank you so much. And because you supported us, um, any last minute things that you're working on that you need our support on us to retweet us to post? Us oh, to us girl, us look, I'm always everything. Yeah, just follow me because I'm about to be doing way too much. Oh, if you ever see something that you like, please retweet it. If you see a BT break story that I did, you know, retweet it. If there's, um, you know, follow Blaine Ebro on Instagram and Twitter. We're always working on new projects. And if you are an aspiring writer, we're always looking for interns and writers. So you can definitely at the email in my bio, ohgia at gmail.com. And um, if you're ever in need of advice, and sometimes it takes me a little longer to get back, but be specific with your advice, y'all. Don't just ask me, you know, hey, how, how do you do what you do? 
because I just answered it. But be very, like, if there's a moment where you need, you know, help or a decision or, you know, you're looking for, also, before I go, um, you know, I so appreciate every single person that and definitely gives me love. It's like one of the best things ever. Um, but I want to word to the wise, just a piece of advice. When you ask people to be their your mentor and you don't know them, it's a bit like going up to a random man on the subway and being like, I want you to be my boyfriend. Because mentorship is not to be played with. Now you can absolutely tell someone that you you know love their work, that you're hoping one day they can start a close relationship, but in the same way you wouldn't go up to a random person and be like, you're my best friend, you should never go up to a person and be like, you're my mentor. Because it gives someone that mentorship should happen organically. So if someone sees something they like in you because you're already working hard and doing your thing, then nine times out of 10, they'll be more likely to kind of help you along the way. If you're not doing anything, you expect a person and that's like kind of waiting for Santa Claus to walk in front of you and give you a gift because a lot of the times, which is why programs like Wean are so important because you'll meet women who are already doing and have already opened the paths and the doors for you, but they also want you to work as hard and just to be as diligent. So while you, know, you might not have a mentor in every person you meet that you admire, you will meet a person that will help you get to where you need to go. So I think that just be careful with like, the way you approach things because like there's a fine line between stalking someone and just following up there's a fine line between telling someone something and then just actually like being a person that you know congratulates them every now and then and someone that they start to get to like and get to know um in the same way that you should just meet people organically in real life in your real life relationships try to apply that to your mentorships too just because those those best organic strong mentors come from real organic relationships all my mentors uh, saw something in me and decided they wanted to mentor me instead of me saying oh i want you to be a mentorship it kind of puts like added pressure on a person and they're like oh my god i don't want to say no but i also don't know what's your name what do you do what what who are you so just be very cognizant of that um and yeah so follow Blame me, bro. Essence Best, you know, Twitter, Instagram, whatever y'all want to do. It's up to you. I've got a lot happening. And then I'll be starting launching my own site soon. Um, So, you know, just stay tuned. I, I don't know what's next. I don't know what I'm going to do this year. But whatever you see and you like, absolutely retweet it, share with your friends. I so appreciate the love. And um, again, guys, please don't give up. Don't give up on your dreams, man. There's not one reason why you can't succeed. Everything is everything is absolutely absolutely something you can do. Well, thank you so much, Gia, for your time. We're gonna let no you go about your day. Thank but you. Thank you so much. I really, 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 really appreciate it. So does the entire week. I love Wien. I love you, Raven. I'm so proud of you. Continue to do great things with PR to politics, and I can't wait to see what you do with this election and all this stuff happening, child. Mm. We gonna pray. But yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> y'all vote this year. Please vote, Lord, vote, vote, please. Um, and thank you guys so much. I'll see you later. Later.